Biology is extraordinary. It explains life, its origin, its meaning. It can help us understand its function from the smallest microorganism to the largest of mammals. It is so extraordinary that it is able to explain how using the same molecules in different combinations and patterns we have such a diversity of species. And we still have many more to discover. It is capable of explaining how species of different kingdoms such as animals and plants, bacteria and fungi can interact with each other and how they evolve together. More than 4 billion years ago, the first forms of life in the oceans arose. Since the appearance of the first marine bacteria, to the great forest or beautiful flowers, Biology has taught us how, thanks to plants and their interaction with the environment, life exists. Indeed, plants are essential for life on the planet. They supply oxygen, food and energy to almost every organism on Earth. But more importantly, they allow humans and animals to breathe. Without their invaluable work converting carbon dioxide into oxygen, there would be no atmosphere that would allow us to inhabit the Earth. The animal kingdom is known for fierce battles and struggles with each other, but also for having different species intimately associated and mutually benefiting each other. There are examples as diverse as the Egyptian plover that cleans the jaws of one of the largest reptiles in the world the Nile Crocodile, or the cinematic symbiosis between clownfish and marine anemones. Similar interactions are recognized in plants. Plants are not passive with their environment. They know how to recognize danger and act accordingly to defend themselves, but also how to take advantage of these mutualistic interactions for their own benefit. For instance, they get help from beneficial fungi and bacteria to grow and to protect themselves from herbivore attacks. Cooperation with other organisms is essential for the survival of plants. Unlike animals, plants cannot run away to avoid danger. They remain motionless, so they have to manage to stay alive. Immobility has promoted the development and use of an array of subtle but efficient surveillance and defense mechanisms. They can be aggressive, develop thorns, filaments or thicker and unpleasant leaves against their enemies. They can create chemical weapons to repel any threats or even to eliminate them. But they can also be seductive, attractive and lethal. They can dress up produce their best perfume and allure predators that kill those herbivores that feed on them. They are capable of cognition, communication, information processing, learning and memory. They are very smart. From ancient civilizations, humans have needed medicine to fight against different diseases. Something similar happens in plants. They also need their own medicine for their survival. And for that, they have their own team of pharmacists who help them fight diseases and threats. The microbes. Let's explore their laboratory, soil and roots of plants. In these advanced facilities, open 24 hours, microbes help the plants develop different mechanisms to avoid being eaten by herbivores or be wiped out by a plague. One of the boldest techniques is the production of toxins and chemicals that make them inedible for herbivores. Sometimes this is not enough. Plants need extra help. These microbes are capable of inducing the production of volatile chemicals to attract the natural enemies of herbivores.
They do not seem like a ruthless ally of plants capable of killing hordes of voracious insects willing to devour them. But behind their adorable and colorful appearance, lady beetles are actually formidable insect predators and great allies of plants. A natural tool to finish effectively with insect pests such as aphids. Growers and scientists have been aware of the harmful effects that microbes could have on plants for a long time. Much investigation has been carried out in order to eliminate those disease-causing pathogens in plants which may destroy an entire crop or forest. However, there are not only the bad guys that cause plant disease, but also the good guys that are beneficial to the plant. Although these have received traditionally less attention, the microbial benefits for the plant can go from improving nutrient uptake, plant growth, and stress tolerance, increasing their defenses. This is exactly what scientists want to foster, the use of beneficial microbes to optimize plant nutrition and natural defenses, thus reducing the amount of chemicals such as pesticides or fertilizers currently used in crop production. The abuse of such chemicals has brought a large list of human health and environmental problems. Teams of scientists from all over the world have set to work on a common idea to improve crop health that would produce higher yields with minimal environmental impact. Thanks to this new line of research on understanding how plants interact with microbes and insects, we aim to decipher how nature does its work. Our final goal is to increase the tolerance and resistance of plants for higher production and to face one of the greatest agricultural challenges, to feed the world's growing population without devastating the environment. We are at the verge of the second green revolution, where improving sustainable use of the associated soil microbial communities may enable crop improvement in marginal lands and regions in support of food security. Agriculture is currently facing a number of challenges that can change the way of working the land forever. Pests and diseases cause losses of 450 billion euros per year. And it's not just an economic issue. But the spread of these scourges also threatens food and the nutritional security of millions of people. This is the reason why researchers and biotechnological companies have joined efforts in order to study the promising relationship between beneficial microbes and plants. Although it is a field of research in continuous progress, several investigations have already shown bacillus Trichoderma, how mycorrhiza and metarhizium are effective in helping the plants defend themselves against attackers, acting as bioprotectors or biopesticides. Let's take a look at a couple of clear examples that show how to apply what has been discovered so far. As mentioned before, bacteria and fungi that live inside the plant without causing any harm can modify the plant's chemistry making them less suitable food for herbivores and improve their defenses. It has been proven that plants that have been bitten by caterpillars produce a volatile chemical to attract parasitic wasps, natural predators of caterpillars. When colonized by some of these beneficial microbes, the production of volatiles is enhanced, increasing the attraction of those natural enemies of the herbivore. These beneficial microbes are very common in plants, but so far they have not been thoroughly investigated for their role in plant defense. Not only can they help to increase resistance against insect pests and diseases, but also in improving the quality, nutritional value and the taste of fruits, vegetables and other crops. As in humans, we can vaccinate the plant so that it can later defend itself more effectively against herbivores. This is the case of the Trichoderma fungus, 
which helps the plant to react more effectively against diseases and infestations, causing increased mortality and reduced growth of the herbivores. Another example which demonstrates that these symbiotic microbes have many beneficial effects on plants besides protection is seen in the case with bumblebees and strawberries. For the cultivation of strawberries, it is very important that bumblebees spend sufficient time visiting the flowers. This is important to cover each of the pistils with pollen. If this does not happen, strawberries will become malformed and therefore discarded for sale on the market, with consequent loss of time and money for the producer. So it is very important to ensure and increase the amount of time that pollinating insects spend on the plant. Inoculation of plants with particular microbial root symbionts called mycorrhizae can increase the time that pollinators spend visiting the flowers, leading to more efficient pollination and increasing crop yields. They are just two examples of what the study of biology can do for us. Research on the beneficial effects of microbes on plants is in its early stages. We could say that it is like a child beginning to read and write. Therefore, it is necessary to increase our knowledge in this field in order to apply these benefits to something as fundamental as the production of fruits, vegetables and other crop products that we eat. We are facing a challenge that requires very diverse skills and knowledge, from molecular biology, environmental experts and agronomists, to companies developing microbial products for use in greenhouses and the field, and so it cannot be developed without joining forces. Under the umbrella of COST, the European Agency for Cooperation in Science and Technology, which supports transnational cooperation among researchers, engineers and academics from all over Europe are involved in the search for more productive and better quality crops. The main objective of COST is to strengthen scientific and technical research in Europe, funding the establishment of collaborative networks among researchers who have nationally financed projects. These cooperation networks are called COST Actions, four-year research and innovation joint work programs open to all fields of science and technology, always seeking excellence and training the new generation of European scientists. In one of these COST Actions, scientists and engineers from different disciplines and from 27 countries have formed a large team, joining efforts to improve agricultural production by investigating how beneficial microbes can be used to enhance plant protection against pests and enhance crop production. A huge human technical team with a common goal, bringing science to the day-to-day -day life of people and making our planet a better place. <laughs>